part of the new Morangatan clan. <clears throat> I got my nephew with me. How sweet is that? Honored to be here. We've got a few more days on the campus and we're going to visit the Moringa farm, uh, check out some manufacturing, and Oliveira is the diva of all species of Moringa plants. So what we're going to do is uh, do a little bit of research, look at some teas, figure out a way how to repackage some of this stuff, and bring it over to America. So tell me more about Moringa tang. What is Moringa tang? Well, Moringa Tang was born out of the fact that um, I became an ambassador for Moringa uh, two years ago uh, after taking an intense class. But I've been consuming Moringa for the past eight years myself. So I have a <clears throat> pretty good regimen. I eat two C's every morning for mental clarity and for energy. And my energy level's been constant for, well, I can tell you, all the way back 50 years ago, but consistently for the last eight years since I've been consuming it. And I also do a smoothie here and there, but uh, I'm trying to figure out a better way for people to consume it. Because there's really no uh, a clear way or a method on how to consume a ring. So a lot of people say, well, two tablets in the morning may be enough, or four a day may be enough. But I, my thing is, you should just eat it throughout the day. And one of the things that you're going to see on Morangatang.com is that we're going to repackage it. And I want you to get rid of that salt shaker, that hypertension shaker. Mm -hmm. And you can shake your way to better health. Put it on your salad. Put it on your cereal. Put it on anything that you consume. Make your smoothie. Of course, include it with some other uh, nutritious foods that is good for the human body. And, but yeah, that, that's one way we're going to repackage it. And then, then the second one is, I'm looking at, uh, we're going to combine uh, uh, isothiocyanate, which is a compound found in the Moringa, with the CBD. And I'm not sure yet it's going to be an A or E or D, but it's coming, folks. So be on the lookout. So that's a, another clear pathway um, that I see the consumption of Moringa because we got a whole bunch of senior citizens like myself that has a lot of inflammation. Now I don't have any inflammation in my body. I can tell you and that's, I think it came from Moringa, right? I don't have achy joints, a stiffness. Every now and then my back gets a little tight, you know. Um, but other than that, I feel amazing every day. Um, uh, Oliveira talks to you in ways that I don't think any other plant on the planet does. You know, it's been around since 2000 BC. But a lot of people <laughs> frown upon it as if it's some type of uh, scary thing when it is the superfood of choice and the superfood of the future. So what we have to do is make sure that there's good quality standards in processing it so that you don't lose the protein content of it uh, because the nutritional value is the highest ever. So one of the things that we don't want to do in America is to have the market flooded by uh, products coming out of India. Not hating on India, but that's their thing there. But in America, we got arable land, we can grow these trees in 8.5 zones, and that means the southern states, and you, if it gets a little cold during the winter months, just cut them down, they're gonna pop right back up. You know, you're talking about a tree that grows up to 21 feet within 90 days. Wow. Yeah, I mean, if you can just understand the power of that statement alone, that tells you how you can keep your body revitalized every day and stay vertical, like me. Right. You know, I just had an uncle that passed away at 101 he always told me, look, 99 ain't going to cut it. <laughs> you got to have 100, baby. So, so yeah, uh, Moringa is, is all that and two bags of chips, if you will, large size. And the thing is, what I want to do is, is try to encourage more black farmers to grow it, uh, the tree. 
not only can you get a, a, a carbon offset for growing the tree, you can also, uh, the, the tree itself sequesters carbon 20 times more than any other tree. So if you're a farmer and you got animals, you can actually use it as a fodder for livestock. Hey, even if you're an aquaculturalist and you are growing fish, uh, have you some trees on your property and grow duckweed and snake grass and then mix it with moringa, it cut your feed bill by 60%. Oh, wow. You know what I'm saying? So all of these nutritional benefits to, and that's why I say moringa tang everybody, and I really mean literally everybody, four-legged, two-legged, doesn't matter. Just adopt it because it is an adaptogen which means that long-term use of it, it becomes part of your cell structure. Mm. And now, when you're talking about uh, immunity, and I, I come up with a term called covidence, and this is my covidence that it hasn't been studied or proven yet that it will ward off COVID, but I'm certain that if anything on this planet that speaks directly to COVID, get your Moringa, and you got your COVID dance. Okay. 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 So we ain't gonna get legal on you. We just gonna drop it like it's supposed to be told. And I want everybody to understand uh, that, as I said before, you won't find anything better. This tree's been around since 2000 BC. Why has it been suppressed all these years? Big farmer. They don't want you to stay healthy. And this American. Uh, dietary uh, system that they have uh, the average age now is just dropping year after year so now if you live to be 50 man let me tell you you feel like you're king but look <laughs> uh-uh that ain't it that ain't, enough. that ain't enough and that don't cut it so how do we extend our genealogy and enhance our DNA um, it's going to be the consumption of moringa and the tree even talks to you uh, it provides electricity, carbon sequestration. I mean, the list goes on and on. So there's still a lot of research, and one of the things that um, why I'm here is to meet the master. You know, Dr. Carver was my hero mm. out of Tuskegee, but I got a new hero, Dr. Newton, right here in Ghana. That's right. He's his nemesis. So uh, when you combine the two, Look, I'm just like a walking library right now, you know, just by virtue of knowing him. And now, four years later, after we met on a Zoom call, I am here where he lectures at the university. So as a result of that, I'm just excited. And every day has just been something fantastic that we've discovered, uh, learning. Uh, and seeing all these bright students around here, the future of, of uh, Africa, the continent, it's pretty amazing. Okay. Um, so how was the, um, how you liking the campus, seeing all these young African minds studying science and technology? It's mind blowing. You know, the fact that I've been in the sciences, I've been in the technology side of it. I haven't studied it, but I'm a beneficiary. So to see all of these young people around here, uh, walking with pride, head held up high, no violence. You know, I haven't even seen anything remotely close to somebody uh, calling somebody a motherfucker. Uh, right. We had one guy we met yesterday. <laughs> he tried to come hard. <laughs> but Joe checked him. Yes, he checked him real quick. So Ain't uh, no niggas here. No, brothers. ain't no niggas here. We understand the rap music. <laughs> Ain't no niggas, we here, we, we African brothers from America. Yeah, you know, his bounce back was, you know, I know Tupac. I said, yeah, I know you're OG, but hey, don't drop that word here. Right, right. You know, you're amongst friends, my guy. So, but yeah, these young people are amazing. And tomorrow we're going to have a chance to speak to some of them. Yes, indeed. Uh, Eight o'clock in the morning, so we're looking forward to that. And I'm an ag tech consultant, so, you know, part of my journey is to teach and train some of the, the next generation how to grow vertically because most of our, I won't say most of our uh, population, but more people are living inside cities now. 
and we need to take advantage of the vacant spaces in these cities to grow food vertically however we want to do it uh, I can tell you I can uh, grow it aquaponically hydroponically aeroponically bioponically verma post it um, now hold up what is the difference between auto well the hydroponics is where you just have nutrients uh, as a source of uh, um, that's uptaking all the beneficial bacteria is uptaken by the roots of the plants as a result of that you get this spiral growth right now when you go into aquaponics you're just adding the fish in and what you when you get there to the fish side of things it's the nitrates and the nitrites that could kill both plants but if you're a young person you're looking for plant-based diet protein-based diet aquaponically is that's the ticket so <clears throat> You know, balance out your ecosystem, um, and this is not difficult. You can even go you buy yourself a 100-gallon fish tank, put it in your house, and have a little floating raft right on top, and grow you some herbs and spices in your kitchen. Outside on your patio, you can get, uh, shit, three or four or five-gallon buckets and have your hydroponic system growing veggies right on your patio. So there's no excuse for us not to grow our way to a healthier lifestyle rather than dependent on this processed food uh, you call it McDonald's I call it Mac death uh, that that ain't gonna cut it so just re-engineer your mind to think about nutritious foods uh, foods that is good for the soul for the mind and the body that allows you to be a critical thinker uh, because in America it's all about oh gotcha you know, I got you this moment, I got you that moment. No, no, I'm going to tell you. It, growing food without soil is like one of the best creations ever. And I grew up on a farm myself. And I didn't like that shit. <laughs> it was too much hard work. But if you're growing without soil, hydroponically, aquaponically, aeroponically, you don't have to worry about that. You just basically have the nutrients available for the plants to uptake. And you do it on a timer, so you, it ain't no hard work. Get you a solar panel and uh, store your energy and have the garden wa water itself. All you got to do is harvest. You know what I mean? That, that's it. Harvest, eat, and make sure that you got enough. Now, you can use several different methods. So one of the other ways you can grow is uh, vermipost. So, say, for instance, uh, all of the food that the food scraps that we throw away we could compost that to make more compost to grow more food right take the red worms uh they they have a a pretty robust job to do underneath the soil and that is to keep it aerated but they also will poop and when they poop and we have a drip system in our grow beds all of that water drains to the bottom back into a 30 gallon reservoir whereby we just repeat the cycle Okay, so once that's done, <clears throat> done on a consistent basis, you can grow an abundance of food. Let's say for a family of four, you can put in a nice little system. You can cut your food bill in half. You know, particularly if you're plant-based or protein-based, um, you don't have to worry about, uh, well, I'm a big contributor because I got a diesel outside and I can run downtown. Yeah, but every time now there's emissions out here that we don't need the environment, right? right. So you're talking about environmental friendly growing uh, specialty crops. Now, if you want to get into business, you can even make you 150K a year. It is just that simple. Now, you can do it indoor, outdoor. Preferably, you can do it in a controlled environment where the temps are controlled. You don't have to worry about uh, uh, transpiration inside of your greenhouse. Everything is controlled. Your nutrient delivery systems. And here in Africa, one of the things that, that's not utilized is bamboo. Uh, well, you know, you could take the bamboo, hollow it out all the way because it grows so abundantly here, and uh, create a nice little hydroponic system. And that could be done indoors. All you got to do is put holes like every six inches apart set your plants in some cocoa fiber put the seed in there and <clears throat> just watch it grow baby watch it grow now of course you got to keep a, a good watch out for um, after you harvest 
I'd say you can harvest every 15 or 20 days oh, wow. in a hydroponic system. Uh, you know, lettuce, basil, bok choy, not too many vining crops because the root zones are really may clog up your system. However, that's the one thing that you'd have to do uh, always after you harvest one crop is make sure you do a nice little swab and clean out your the uh, inside of your um, your bamboo. Okay. And that goes with a gutter system as well. Okay, thank you. So in closing, mm -hmm. um, what would be your last words to sum up this knowledge you drop um, and how important Moringa and Moringa Tang is for the future? Africa, America, Europe, Asia, and abroad. Well, first thing is uh, Moringa Tang is the tang is turning all nations green. Uh, could be turn African nations green. But I use them both interchangeably because, you know, the Filipino population has, they use a lot of Moringa. Uh, I, I should have Asian population, um, Indian population uses a lot of Moringa. In fact, in India, it's a big, big part of their GDP. So the message is, as I said earlier, my job is to try to educate and get black farmers in particular to grow Moringa, uh, not only uh, for profit, but to receive a carbon offset for, from the government. Now, you got some of these old crazy people out here talking about, well, it's an invasive tree. That's bullshit. You know, um, there's nothing evasive about Moringa. Uh, all we have to do is, is look at it as a transformative plant uh, to keep us all healthy and vital so that we can live way beyond 50 years. Uh, so my message is, if you don't know about it, go to morangatang.com. Uh, I switch up the content there every two months. So we're constantly, because there's a big movement going on right now. Four years ago, a lot of people didn't know anything about Moringa. But today, uh, just go on TikTok, look on YouTube. You see it everywhere. But the thing that you need to keep in mind is that it has to be processed properly. So there's got to be quality standards put in place to make sure that you're not buying it. And if, if you go and to a a storefront and you're gonna look in the purchase and if it's not super green looking uh-uh it's it doesn't have a protein content now you go to my website I'm gonna show you what uh, fresh moringa should look like and it's greener than any pen that you can write with okay uh, it should be just a very vibrant color and the moment you start consuming it is the moment your body starts to heal itself. Because it, as I said, the uh, isothiocyanates is, uh, creates this sickling effect in the blood, which means that, that you are gonna be enriched. Your body is gonna understand it, it's gonna process it, and the future looks good if you are a consumer. If you're not, you need to get adapted. And there we have it right there. So we're here with James Brady for Morangatang.com. Go check us out. Highlight Moringa, hashtag Moringa, hashtag Morangatang. Any last words? No, my last words is I'm, I'm just happy my nephew's here with me recording this and being on this journey because it's pretty tremendous. Uh, <clears throat> I never thought I would be in Ghana um, for any purpose. I've always wanted to, to visit uh, the continent, but here I am on another journey that I didn't foresee four years ago. Didn't plan on it, but I'm here, and that's because the number one diva of all 13 species is Oliveira. Some people say Oliveira. I call her Oliveira. Some people call it the drumstick tree, but she speaks to you in ways once you start consuming her. Oh, man. <laughs> She grows your lips, she takes care of your skin, she takes care of the entire body inside and out. So last words, place your order, get you a t-shirt, start using the toothpaste, and get rid of that flow ride, and fly like a bird. There we have it, all right, we out, Sustain African Productions.